Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara and today I'm continuing to work on my abandoned coffee shop project. I've already done a couple videos on this project, so if you want to check that out before you watch this video, I will put a link to the playlist above right here. My two previous videos contained the information on how I did this brick look and also how I made the peeling wallpaper. And in one of those previous videos, I had a comment from Jolie Sturm that said, This looks so awesome. You need an electric plug outlet with a broke plate cover. And... Yes! <laughs> I was like, exactly! that. I'm trying to get this detail, the texture that goes into creating this abandoned effect that's just... Wow. And that kind of detail is what I'm looking for. And thank you, Jolie, for that suggestion because I had not thought of it. And so that's what this video is. I'm going to show you how I made an electrical plug outlet. I made the different pieces, even down to the junction box, so that I could show one of the electrical outlets with the plate off, one of them is broken, and one of them is intact. So I will show you all of that so you can follow along if you would like to. And in the end, I will show you how much this little detail added to the project. And in future videos, if you have ideas, please share them with me. Um, I really love to do projects. I love thinking of ideas. But I can't think of everything. And you guys are so amazing and so creative. So please, 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 please never hesitate to add a suggestion. I might just take it and it might just make my projects better. So thank you for that comment and keep commenting. I think that's it. Is that all I have? Awesome! Woo! Because this project is so small, I'm able to use some cardstock that's left over from another project. I am going to be making pieces of cardstock that are 3 8 inch tall by a quarter inch wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a long line that is 3 8 inches from the edge of my paper and then I'm going to mark off quarter inch pieces. Right now I'm making 12 different pieces and that should be enough to make four electrical outlet covers. So I'm going to use three per cover and I'm going to layer them on top of each other so that I have a stack of three that have been glued together to make the correct thickness. After that, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to bevel the edges. This is because most of the outlet plates are usually beveled to the side and it just gives it a nicer finish than having a flat cutoff side. Then I'm going to take two dots and mark off where the holes for the actual plugs should be. I'm going to use an eighth inch hole punch in order to make these holes in the outlet cover. After that's done, I'm going to make sure that I make the other hole, trying to keep it as centered as possible. I'm using a crocodile punch, and it was fairly easy to use. I highly suggest those kinds of punches. You also want to make sure to keep the circles that are created when you use the hole punch, because later you're going to use those to make the plug faces. Before I do that, I'm going to use some off-white paint in order to paint both the plates and the plug faces. I'm really not quite sure what to call them, so <laughs> the plug faces I'm referring to are the things that have the three holes that the plug prong goes into. And obviously this is for an American style plug. You would have to adjust it um, if you wanted to do something more European. So now, because I'm going to have some of the plugs falling off in this project, I need to make a junction box so that it looks realistic within the wall. So what I'm doing is taking one of my previously cut out 3 8 inch by quarter inch uh, templates and I'm cutting just a sliver off of each side. This is just to make it slightly smaller. And what I want to do is glue it to a piece of cardstock and I'm going to cut probably an eighth inch border around each side. 
I'm going to cut a square out of each corner so that I can easily fold up the sides to create a rectangular box. This is what's going to make my junction box that will be set back inside the wall. And I'm just going to glue the corners so that I know that it will stay together. The next step is to paint it and I wanted to first do a layer of black because it is going to be obviously an old metal because this is an old abandoned project. So even though I'm going to put some silver on top of it, I first want to put a base of black because this is going to help it look like old and old metal that's been there for a while. So while that dries, I'm going to work on my plug faces. This is just a sharp, it looks like one of those dental tools that they use. It's just a sharp tool and I'm slowly, carefully putting three holes into the plug face. And um, putting two at the top and then one at the bottom. It kind of creates a triangle shape in the center of the plug face. And now I'm going back with an X-Acto blade because I'm going to make the two holes on the top long and skinny. Because, like I said, this is an American style plug and they have the long skinny metal pieces on top and then the round piece on the bottom. So I'm trying to create that look with my plug face. So now that the black layer has dried on the junction box, I'm going to use my silver metallic paint to go over it and to give it that metal look. After that's done, um, I kind of looked up the junction box and how it looked and how the plug faces were attached to it, and it has a metal piece that runs along the top of the actual box. So I created a simplified version of that. Obviously it's much more complicated in, you know, real life scale, um, but I made a simplified version of that. It goes across the top of the junction box so that the plug faces can easily sit on top of it and I'm using glue just to glue that down and then to carefully one at a time place the plug place the that's a tongue twister place the plug faces on top of that piece of metal and there you have the finished junction box So now I'm ready to install it into my project. I'm measuring up from the floor. I just measured in my house typically how high the plug faces are up off of the floor. I measured in and then just kind of drew the approximate size hole I would need in order to put the junction box into the wall. And I also decided I was just going to cut a hole anywhere I was going to put some sort of electrical outlet, whether it was showing the junction box or whether it was fully intact or if the plate was broken because I wanted that darkness behind it, the darkness that would be created by there being a hole in the wall and it just adds that level of realism. So I went ahead and cut out all the squares. I did one underneath the window, one above um, the one that's higher up near the side of the window, it's going, there's going to be like a coffee bar area, like where the baristas would have prepared things, so obviously there'd be a plug up there. I might actually create some kind of um, coffee machine that actually is still plugged in there, so I kept that one kind of intact. Um, and then the one here on the side, I decided it was going to have a broken plate face, just like my lovely commenter suggested. So here I'm just using some wood glue and carefully, carefully pasting in the junction box. And I was starting to play around with where possibly the plate had gone, so I was trying to figure out if I wanted it hanging down or on the floor. I was just kind of testing that out, seeing what I liked. This is the intact plate and so all I did was took some of those round pieces that I created the plug faces on and I glued them behind the electrical outlet plate and then just glued that into the wall area. This final one is the broken plate face and so I had 
imagine that the plug faces had fallen out completely back into the wall and all that was left was the hollow plate at the front. So now in order to make these plate faces at home, I need to age them into my project. So of course around, say, an old plug there might be some electrical damage, especially if it was open to weather. So I'm just darkening the area as if maybe it had shorted out, maybe gotten real warm in those areas and just caused the wall to get discolor or possibly even get a little bit burnt. So that's it guys, that's the end of this part of the project. I'm still really enjoying it. Um, this, like I said, came from a subscriber comment. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Um, it just really kind of spurred me on to continue in my quest for detail and realism. So yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing end of 2017 and I will see you in the new year. Bye.